couple videos ago, someone called me a heretic for the gardening influencer world. And this is just probably gonna solidify me in that kind of space. This video is uh, gonna rub some people the wrong way, but keep in mind, I just want you to garden. So if you think this is a whole load of bollocks, that's in memory of Kate Middleton, who's missing right now, <laughs> joking. Sit and listen before you comment. There is such a thing as too much compost and there's not much you could do to prove me wrong. Okay, so I think as a gardening community on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or just even in garden meetings, whether it's a convention or a speaking engagement, the main message is compost, 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 add the compost, compost, fix that, manure, compost. And I have a genuine concern that the continual dumping of compost is just setting people up for failure. Now there are signs and symptoms of too much compost. You can get kind of deformed leaves, which is a sign of herbicide laden compost. And I have a video on that. You can go check that out. It's a soil recovery video where I reference Roots and Refuges experience with this and how they could technically turn that soil around. This was years ago. I think this was like two year ago commentary, but the science and the info in there is legitimate if you're experiencing plants that look like this. On the other side of the coin, it can actually look like fertilizer burn. So burn and herbicide damage kind of look similar. Burn has more leaf color change rather than deformities. Soil deformity, I'm gonna go with pesticide, crazy looking colors, that's likely fertilizer, AKA too much compost. So we're gonna go over, I guess, what makes compost a detriment to add an excess, and then how to reclaim a soil system where you are like, oh no, I did way too much compost, I'm in the danger zone. <laughs> and then ultimately how to add compost in a preventative way that will not harm your plants. Now that goes without saying, even if you're not seeing damage to plants, compost excess nutrients is very damaging to the environment. That bottom line on its own is true. So the first one is actually newer compost. Now people who purchase manures or like direct from the farm, not in bags, but direct from a farm, or people who go to city compost, I've noticed this with Saskatoons, or the people who use their at home or their neighbor's compost that isn't completely composted. This is probably the most dangerous scenario. And that is because ammonium is very high in newer compost. As the compost ages or cures, it begins to go down in the ammonium content. Now ammonium, why ammonium is dangerous, is because it actually limits the uptake of other nutrients. In particular, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. And that goes, that holds true for if you have a bunch of aged compost. So if you have aged compost, you're like, actually, <laughs> I don't use new compost, I use bagged, old, cured, sifted into a fine little, there's no chunks, it's completely composted. The other token is too much aged compost, meaning you're growing in straight compost in a raised bed scenario. Maybe you're doing a um, no dig garden, but you've done it to the excess, and I'm not trying to dig at anyone that developed that technique. Again, do what you want, okay, I really don't care. But that ammonium, in the aged compost, while it's minuscule, if you have a large volume or you're growing in just compost or you have container garden where you're like, oh, compost and perlite, perfect. That in and of itself, the ammonium level in that is enough to restrict calcium, magnesium and potassium uptake, bottom line. So have you ever had blossom end rot? Have you ever thought to yourself, I swear I water correctly, so it's not from that. I can promise you that my soil pH is okay-ish, which we'll get into why it probably isn't if you're adding too much compost, but I digress. The blossom end rot that keeps on coming and coming and biting you in the butt, biting you in the butt, biting, you probably have too much compost. As a very, other than fertilizer burn, blossom end rot is a very common thing that can happen because you have restricted uptake of calcium magnesium. 
Potassium doesn't really affect the blossom mineral, but calcium and magnesium absolutely do. And therefore, if you are restricted in uptake, yeah, you're gonna end up with blossom and rot. Now, the next thing that compost does is it actually increases the alkalinity of the soil. Now, if you have an acidic soil and you're trying to increase the pH, maybe it makes sense to add compost in excess to reclaim the soil's pH purposes only and there are better things to use but say that was the resource you had fine by all means however if you have alkaline soil and i'm just going to throw it out there if you have a bedrock that is uh, limestone so high in calcium or magnesium bicarbonates your water is likely very alkaline i'm going to do a video on how to reclaim soil ph here next week very shortly but ultimately speaking if you now add compost to the mix you're just like going to take up the alkalinity and if you look at the nutrient availability score sheet if you will you will soon realize that the more alkaline you get the less nutrients you get to uptake in general so calcium magnesium potassium we know are kind of just out in the wind you can't uptake those to begin with now you combine that with all the micronutrients and macronutrients that can't be absorbed because the pH is too high and it's, it's game over. And the reason why pH affects this is because the roots work on passive and active modes of uptake for nutrients. And I can do a whole video just on that, but pH heavily impacts the passive systems as well as to an extent the active systems of nutrient uptake. And now, what are the fixes? Well, the first and most obvious is to take the compost and spread it out over a larger area. So if you have a raised bed, unfortunately, you're going to just have to go get, go get mineral soil, go get a garden soil mix. That is gonna have compost and it's gonna have soil. It's usually a 30, 70 mix or it's a 20, 80 mix. It's not 50, 50, it's less than that. And that's what you wanna go with. <sighs> Number two is actually the addition of nitrogen fertilizers. Now, it doesn't have to be synthetics, it can be organics, but if you've been on this channel long enough, you guys already know that I don't care which one you use because it doesn't matter. I could do a video on that too, but ultimately speaking, we just need the nitrogen present. So you can use urea, you could use blood meal, you could use, use ammonium sulfate, those are the chemical forms. That's on its own what is going to help your soil. That presence of nitrogen influx is going to help the microbes to break down and decomp that compost, age it quicker. And that method is particularly good if you have compost that has been added that has not been properly aged, if that makes sense. And yes, urea technically is, is urine. And I have a video on how to use urine in your garden. I know. The boys on the Geek Crew asked for it. I gave it to them. Women, I'm sorry. Option number two is actually to increase the acidity. So we talked about how the compost can increase alkalinity and that's for both aged and old or and new composts will increase alkalinity. So to offset that alkaline increase, which ultimately will affect nutrient uptake, we can counteract with the, that with acidifying the soilless medium for lack of a better term. Now I'm gonna do a video on how to acidify soil but keep in mind that this is very difficult, very difficult to do, and it can take months. It can take years, depending on how badly you've abused the soil system. So this isn't a quick fix. This is one where you're like, okay, I'm never moving. I'm retiring in this home. I gotta make this happen. That's when you would use this technique. And the last one is flooding. So nitrogen is, particularly nitro forms of nitrogen that are dangerous to plants in excess, not nitrogen like the urea and the blood meal I was talking about, but nitrogen such as ammonium can be lost from a soil system. Now there's different methods in which nitrogen is lost from a soil system. There's volatilization, which is gassing off. And then there is leaching, which is moving down out of the root profile into groundwater and or just lower in the soil profile. That can be done by flooding. So what you could do is you could flood the area. 
few times a year, in the spring, in the fall, maybe once or twice, that on its own will force that nitrogen out of the system. Now, most of it will be leached out in this method via gravity or just connecting to that water and trickling its way down, or it will be gassed off because wet soil is notorious for gassing. And that's just a known fact. That's why when you, have you ever driven by a pond and you're like, oh, that stinks. It's the levelization you're smelling. <laughs> that is what your soil outdoors will do if you get it wet enough. Okay, so prevention. Say that your only option is to use compost. And again, I am not against using compost. If this is the tool you have to garden, do it. That's all I care about, no mystery here. However, if you had to choose between a manure and a vegetable compost to add in excess, not responsibly, but in excess, choose a vegetable-based compost over a manure-based compost. Now, this goes for all manure. Rabbits, guinea pigs, ostrich, I mean, cows, pigs, sheep, bats, you name it, manure in general. The reason for that is because the manures in particular have a high level of salt. Now, vegetable compost has a high level of salt too, do keep that in mind, but it's higher in this sense. And it also is higher in that ammonium as well. So if you had to pick, go for a vegetable. If you have to use it in excess, if you had to just like put it on the garden, I would go for manure, but that's, that's a whole topic on its own. The second one is to ensure that the compost is aged. We touched on this at the beginning. So aged means it's sat. So it's been composted and sat. If that's not possible, you just have to use some of the methods I gave you for fixes to help that along. And the last step is to just increase organics naturally. So the purpose of compost is to increase organics in your soil. Maybe you're trying to introduce organics for the physicality of the soil. If you watch my soil zones video, I repeatedly mentioned the additions of organics, compost, manures, that sort of thing to reclaim some soils that are less than ideal. Organics also help with moisture retention. They help with obviously nutrients. So you can increase these naturally. One way to do this is with cover crops and or uh, cutting at the base of the plant. So I've done videos in the fall where I show just cutting the plant off at the base and leaving the roots in situ. This will leave organic material in your soil. If you're not pulling the, the roots out or the whole plant out and tossing that all into the compost bin and you're leaving it in place, that is beneficial. It's beneficial to you, it's beneficial to your future plants, your soil. So try to increase organics naturally great, great way to do it is by leaving it in situ and or cover cropping and then mowing that cover crop down um, and then mulching. So think of a forest floor. No one's raking those leaves up. No one's clearing out that debris. So actually building up the organic material, kind of trying to garden in, in and amongst that debris, if you will, even if it does look kind of trashy, which is a complaint sometimes, you'll end up getting kind of these layers of breakdown. You'll get what looks almost like compost. You'll get like a humus, you'll get kind of like uh, crusty leaves, and then you'll have like your natural leaf on, leaf on top. That on its own um, really truly helps your soil structure. And it you avoid any of these negatives that we find when we put this stuff on in excess. So comment down below how you use compost in your garden, what issues you've seen, because always remember, 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 I may tell you what to do theoretically, but in practice, it is very different. And the comment section, the geek crew is the best at telling you what to do for your area. So they'll usually comment, I'm from here, I'm from this zone, blah, 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 blah. This is what I do, this is why I do it. Just go read that. Take what I'm saying, go read that, whatever comments suits you, and then kind of like put those together. The answer is in the middle. The answer is in the middle. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.